hi, hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess and I'm here to talk about what I read in January, OBS. Um, somehow, I always say this, but as I get older, it is truly amazing in the worst way how fast time goes. Like it's already one month through the new year and February is already short, it's gonna fly by. <laughs> I know like time technically isn't real, but like it's terrifying to me. I do not do well with it. Huh. So anyway, I hope your year is off to a good start. Mine is, huh. you know, I'm alive. So there's that. My reading has been up and down in January. If you've seen some of my, if you have seen some of my other videos that I posted in January, then you'll know that I've had some low lows in January, but I also did get to some books that I enjoyed. So it's been a mixed bag, but <sighs> we're now in February, Black History Month, the month of my birth, the month of Nigel's birth. Um, so that is something to celebrate. And I just, I feel like I'm just telling you all of this. If my energy seems different in this video, like I want to go ahead and record it, talk about what I read in January, but not like this year's off to a terrible start. It's just, you know, life is hard. So anyway, let's get into what I read. I read eight things in January, which I didn't realize that. I started off really great with The Love Con by Sericia Glass. This is a romance that was recommended uh, to me by Mara. So our two main characters, she's a black woman, she's plus size, and the other person, he's a white dude, regular size, whatever, and they're into cosplaying and they have basically been besties since like high school. And she's in like a basically cosplay, like design reality show and makes it to the final. But the twist that they didn't know coming was that they were gonna have to have, they were gonna have to design like a couple, like a pair cosplay. So they needed somebody else. And so the other person had their partner. And so she, you know, on TV, when they were asking her like, who's gonna help you? She said her friend, but said that that was her partner. So it's basically like fake dating um, so that, you know, she can get through this reality show and there's history to why, like they have interesting circumstances of how they grew up and why they were close. And so obviously fake dating, friends to lovers. And I really, really enjoyed it. Her name is Kenya. And on the reality show, you get to see that she's faced, um, obviously it's difficult just being on reality show and the whole production of it, but then she's faced a lot of like judgment um, from the judges, like, um, with kind of seeming like they're trying to push and instigate so that she comes across as like that angry black woman and, and, and stuff like that. So she's gone through that and then obviously being plus size, but I just thought it was really sweet. I love their relationship. He just seemed really sweet and you would get some points of view from him as well. And the only, it is, is it closed door? No, it's more like fade to black because they do, she sets up the scene and you know like they're having sex, but you don't really get descriptions. And then it's kind of like, oh, we woke up later or woke up the next morning, if I remember correctly. So not very steamy. You know, there's a little bit of tension and there's touches and stuff like that. So I haven't perfected my steam scale, my eggplants, but when I do, I'll let you know. But I just really enjoyed it. I enjoy the relationship, the aspects of it, even with the, I'm not into cosplay myself, but reading it was interesting. And just, um, I just thought they had a great relationship. And when something, when a problem entered the picture, I liked how it was handled for the most part. So um, yeah, I thought it was great. If you don't, I know, I think Bethany didn't love this because she doesn't like like childhood friends to lovers or whatever, which is fine. Um, but I did, it felt, it was great. And then some issues she had with like her parents, I felt were relatable. So I think you should read it. I think it's really great. I think I gave it a four, four and a half. And so that was my first read of the year. So it was a great way to start, which thankfully I had that because then it went <laughs> downhill very quickly. Uh, I read The City We Became by N.K. Jemison. So I read the Broken Earth trilogy. I've probably talked about this on this channel multiple times and I loved it. And so I do plan to get to other books on Jemison's backlist. 
But this is a newer release by her that I had heard a lot of mixed things about from people who are very big fans of Jemison and didn't love this book, but then some people did love it. So I was like, you know what, I'm gonna read it. I may be in the, you know, the people who do love it. So my lovely friends over at uh, Bring Your Own Book podcast were planning to read it. So I was like, well, perfect. I'm already planning to read it. So I joined them, we read it together, and then we discussed it. I'll link the podcast episode down below. <laughs> The, out of the four of us, only one person loved it. And the rest of us did not have a pleasant time reading it. Had it not been for this podcast, I would have DNF'd it on page two. I knew it automatically, this was not for me. But I pushed through because I, you know, I had made a commitment to discuss this book, read and discuss this book with them. It's just so different. It's literally the all the New York boroughs, but they're like in a person. So they're like the boroughs personified. And there's, you know, a big bad. That's kind of like a very simplistic way of describing it. And so I was like, in my mind, for some reason, I was thinking like Transformers or something. <laughs> I don't know, or like Power Rangers, but they were literally in people. Like the, per the personalities of the boroughs are in like people. And I've only been to New York as a visitor. So I don't know much about the boroughs from what I've seen online. And there are some people who are from or live in New York who really enjoyed the book, who said that it's very accurate. It's a very much a love letter to New York. And uh, <laughs> to me, here's my thing. I love social commentary and critique um, in books, but usually when it's more, I guess, layered, camouflaged, you know? Because um, it definitely is in the Broken Earth trilogy. But in <laughs> The City We Became, it is very, on the nose like you don't have to read into anything it is just there and i didn't like that because every borough like i said is basically their personalities are the stereotypes of every borough so there was oh my god staten island who was like this white girl who was racist and then you had uh bronca from the bronx and i just I just didn't love it. You had Manny, who was Manhattan. The villain felt really like the mustache twirly villain and someone else really felt more like the villain and just aspects of the story. And so people were like, get the audiobook. So I did listen to the audiobook and oh my God. I mean, Robin Miles is incredible. She does a great job, but it was just a lot going on. There was just so many reasons why this book was not for me. And again, I made that commitment, so I finished it, but I would have DNF'd it ASAP Rocky had I not been going to discuss it on that podcast. I just did not enjoy the tone, the characters, the, the plot. I just didn't care for it. Um, and like I said, it's just very on the nose and I'm like, okay, like, I don't know. No hate to Nora Jemison, you know, she's an incredible writer. There are people who love this book and I'm happy for them. I'm definitely not continuing in that series. I'm going to go to her backlist. So if you've read the new, if you've read The City You Became and you're from New York, very familiar with New York, like tell me, how do you feel about it? Like, did you feel it was accurate or really anyone who's read it? I just, I don't know. It wasn't for me. I think I gave it a two and that was being generous. <laughs> Then I continued my descent into bad books and I read Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. I have a vlog and a ranting, uh, spoiler free and spoiler re review that I'll link. But needless to say, Andy Weir is not for me. I read The Martian, meh, gave him a second chance. Project Hail Mary is The Martian part two. Actually, it's just The Martian again. The main character in this one, his name is Ryland Grace. He is Mark Watney, except he doesn't use curse words. I'm not gonna waste any more time here. Obviously I'll link those videos you can see, but I just, I think Andy Weir's writing is not for me. His humor is definitely not for me. I just, no, no thank you, I'm good. Um, I also read The Final Support Group by Grady Hendrix in that same vlog, same review also not for me. I never considered myself a big like slasher girl trope fan, whatever, but it is intriguing. And the only two books I've read about it were by Riley Sager, terrible. And now this one by Grady Hendrix, which spoiler alert, I say that he needs to go straight to jail after some of the things that he put in this book. I thought it was ass. 
It was terrible. Lynette is one of the worst points of views I've ever had the misfortune to read from. Like, I really feel like Grady owes me reparations for what my eyeballs had to endure to get through that book. I thought it was terrible, but you can see more of my in real time thoughts or my rant in those videos because I would like to leave those in the past. Yikes. Um, they both won their respective Goodreads categories. I think Grady was horror and Andy Wu was sci-fi and um, it was a vote for my patrons for me to read two of the winners of the Goodreads categories. So, <laughs> love that for me. But then things turned around and I read Criminal, which is by Karen Slaughter. So this is Will Trent number six. So a couple years ago, I was like, I wanna make my way through Karen Slaughter's backlist. So I had a friend who told me where to start. So there are two series that Karen Slaughter has, and one is the Grant County that has five books, and then Will Trent, which she's still putting out books in now. And so tech, if you wanna, I, I, I wanna get through all her books to make like a where to start or like reader's guide to Karen Slaughter. Like, I don't think anyone needs it, but I wanna make it. But just a quick, if you want to start Karen Slaughter's backlist, I would start with the Grant County series first because a character, they start some characters overlap and for the, not to be spoiled for the story, it would be better to start with Grant County first. And that one is, the first one in Grant County is blindsided. And then I think there's five books five or six in Grant County. And then a character, you see a character from Grant County who's now in the Will Trent series. So Will Trent is such a precious being to me. I love him so much. Oh, he's so complicated and sad and tall and he's so sweet. And so he's just, he's a precious being. But anyway, this is number six in Will Trent. Um, I can't say many things without spoiling some things. The thing about these books is you can read them on their own, but because it's like, you know, a crime per book, but there are interpersonal things that are going through all of the book between romantic relationships and like work relationships and like complicated histories between people. So it's best to read them in order to get all of that. And I just, mm, <laughs> mm, well, so this was another great installment. I mean, it's really hard for me. I think the lowest, I'm a three star, I guess, from Karen Slaughter, they're still enjoyable to me. She does have a lot of very dark and graphic content in her books. So I would always uh, go into that. Like they're obviously crime, they're like uh, police procedurals, but they're always investigating some kind of horrific crime. It's usually, you know, something, a crime against a woman or like a, a murder. So they're not just like, a, oh no, someone got stabbed. And the, you know, she goes into a lot of detail. Usually they're very, can be, um, you know, things people don't want to read. So just content warning, there's usually a lot of violence and abuse and uh, in her books. So, but I, I jive with Karen Slaughter's writing in her stories. Like I said, I love Will Trent. I loved Grant County. So I'm just slowly making my way through those. So I can't say much about this one, except that learned, we're le we learned some more things about Will's history and ways he's connected to some people in his life and just, <sighs> Will Trent. I would love, I know right now it's like, oh, we don't need more copaganda. This is a side tangent. And I saw someone talk about this on TikTok. I am very much, fuck the police, okay? Like obviously there's some who are great and many who are not. As fictional TV, I enjoy Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Do I think that's how police work works? No, absolutely not. I enjoyed Criminal Intent. Like I know, I like watching these things for entertainment. I'm not watching them because I'm like, mm, yes, I love the police state. Absolutely not. So I, <laughs> while certain things maybe they do in these books as police officers, investigators, detectives, I'm like, mm. you know, I will say in this one, we get flashbacks to like the 70s and it's the 70s. So there's some, a lot of racism and racist words used in here where I was like, oh, it was a little bit uncomfortable to read. So I will say that, but um, it was obviously the characters, like I wasn't taking that as like Karen Slaughter is like this. 
because it was very much contained for that time period. Anyway, that all being said, I would love to see Grant, like them melded together where the Will Trent and Grant County, because at first they're kind of running along perpendicular parallel timelines and like, cause they're in the, they're relatively in the same place in Atlanta. Um, and then like outside further of Atlanta. Um, and then obviously when they come together, once Grant County ends, like I would love it to be a TV series, but you know, anyway, so I read that one. It was called Criminal by Karen Slaughter. I told you nothing about the book really, but it was another great installment. And so I'm still catching up slowly, but surely I've read a good many of her works. So, you know, one day I'll be caught up maybe, but maybe not because she just keeps on writing. And I gave it one four stars. So then I also read Caliban's War, which is the second book in the Expanse series by James S.A. Corey, another four star read. I have already seen this covered in the show, but still it was great to read it because obviously the show doesn't have everything. And um, I love getting Christian Abbasarella's perspective and like reading from that because she is a hoot. But also just, I don't know, I don't, I've, you know, there's obviously there's people who don't like it. I enjoy it as this big space opera. And for me, it is so helpful in my mind because I've already watched it and I know all the players, I have faces for them and I know where they are in this whole thing in the universe. And so then reading it is just really like cementing the story for me and what's going on and it's just all making sense. And then I'm gonna rewatch it. I'm really gonna know what's going on. But I'm like, yeah, it's great to me. Um, obviously it's not perfect, but mm, I would say I wish there was more Amos, but I am planning to read. There's like some novellas between some of the books. I'm going to read those because I just want to know all things and then I'm continuing my rewatch and then I'm going to read the third book, so on and so forth. I think the show only is covering the first six books. I don't know because there's nine books total. The, the last one came out last year, so we shall see. Anyway, I've, I'm enjoying the series thus far and will hopefully enjoy Abaddon's Gate, which is book number three. And then I read two nonfiction books um, in January. I did start another book, but I unfortunately didn't get to finish it. But I read Cultish, The Language of Fanaticism by Amanda Montel. This one has been a really popular nonfiction book that came out last year and I bought a copy because I thought I would love it. Spoiler alert, I did not. Um, I'm when I rated it on Goodreads, I give it a three star. So I, Mara from Books Like Whoa, well, Monet, and uh, Alyssa, who is Nerdy Nurse Reads, in the beginning of March, we are gonna have a live discussion. Um, I will, I think it's gonna be March 6th, a Sunday, but you'll see the, you know, I'll post about it. But we're gonna have a live discussion because I know on Goodreads, at least Monet gave it five stars, Mara gave it four, and then Alyssa and I, Buddy read it, and I feel like we were both around the same place. I don't know if she rated it or if she rated it three stars, but we were both like, oh, it's very low surface level. So we'll get into more of those things um, during the live. I think it's a great introduction to nonfiction just generally because it's so simple. Sim it, like, you know, it's short, it's easily written, like it's very approachable and I think the just the title alone will bring people in, but it just wasn't as much a deep dive as I wanted. But it really talks about the languages that cult like groups and cult groups use. Um, so it was fun. I'm mad that I bought it full price though. So there's that. And then I also read Mediocre. Well, this was a reread, which is the date. Ooh. Oh gosh. I have the book somewhere. The Dangerous Legacy of Mediocre White Men or something. The Dangerous Legacy of White Male America by Ijoma Oluo. So this was the vote for Book Community Reads January book pick. So I, <laughs> look at me, I actually read the book pick in the month. Oh my gosh. The live show, if, mm, when is this video going up? The live show is gonna be this Saturday. So you might see this video before then. And it was great again. Um, I don't have much, much additionally to say, except it just like, you know, I remembered a lot from my first time reading it. I got angry again. I was mad and sad again. And we'll talk about it in depth in the live show. I hope that you can join us. It is Saturday, February 5th on my channel and it's gonna be at 2 p.m. Eastern time, 8 p.m. Central European time. Um, So that should be a delight to read. And I think um, I already know what's gonna win the March pick, but 
that was my month. Um, it was, I did have some hits and a lot of not it's. <laughs> and I started Empire of Silence by Christopher, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, Rokio, maybe? Um, on the recommendation of Leanna and I should have known better. So I'm about halfway through that and I'm finishing it for the sheer reason that I want to have a structured discussion with Leanna about this book. Right now, it can, right now, like, if it continues on this trajectory, it's gonna be a two. It can, it can improve because I still have so many goddamn pages to go. So it could improve, it's not a five. We've been, it's been too slow for it to be a five, but maybe it could bump itself up to a 3.5, 3.75, maybe. Because the premise intrigued. First 25%, I was here for it. And I was teased about something that I want to see, but this is giving me 900 page prologue. And I'm very upset about it, but I'm gonna finish it. But that was my month for January. Again, I apologize if, you know, my energy seemed off. I needed to get, I know, like I don't owe anybody this video. I didn't have to, but like want to get. I like doing monthly wrap ups. It's just for me, I'm just like, I don't know, you know? <sighs> Life is just hard, man. Depression sucks. You know, I still don't have a therapist. <laughs> Not great for me. Um, I don't know, anyway. I'm reading a book right now that's not Empire of Silence. It's a YA sci-fi that I'm really enjoying, so I hope I can finish that today. Actually, I was going to, I might just not edit this video and just go lay on the couch and do what I want to do. Mmm, God, that's tempting. Anyway, thank you for watching. <laughs> Thanks for watching this video. I hope your year is off to a better start than mine. Um, again, it's not horrible. I'm just being, I'm just me. I'm just being dramatic. So. I hope you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. I'll have the videos, not the videos. Yeah, any videos I mentioned, link down below, the books link down below. If you want to buy them, they're, they're affiliate links. So thank you. I mean, it is Black History Month. So a way that you can support a black creator in addition to liking, subscribing, sharing uh, my video is to use any of my affiliate links because those do help me out and I greatly appreciate it. So I think that's it for me today. I need to go change out my laundry and maybe make myself a snack. So I hope you are black hydrated moisturized and sunscreened yes even in the winter sunscreened but I will see you in the next one